Hello and welcome to another episode. Now, what do you think of when you're dreaming up your next surf trip? Tropical waters, perfect beaches, palm trees, playful peaks breaking over sand, me too. But what we don't tend to think about when it comes to our next surf trip is getting changed in cold windswept car parks, pulling on five millimeters of rubber. But if you wanna make the most of fewer crowds and tap into unexplored coastline, heading to some of the colder fringes of the world is what you've gotta to do to get that. So in this video, we're gonna be breaking down some of the best cold water surf destinations on earth. First up, we've got Chile, and Chile is by no means the coldest destination in today's video, but it's an epic surf destination, and how cold it is entirely depends on where you go. You know, in the north, it's pretty warm, and, and by the time you get to the southern reaches of Patagonia, it's as cold as anywhere. So most of the surfing focus is in and around the surf town Pichilemu. It's kind of a small, pretty lively little surf town. It's where Punta de Lobos is, which is like a big wave point break on the right day. Um, really powerful wave, but on a normal day, it's just a fun, normal point break. And yeah, if, if you get sick of the crowds there, like I said, all around that coastline, there's so many different waves, like so much untapped potential, you know, all the different waves that Chile is so famous for. I'm not gonna mention all of them here because I'll let you go and explore them for yourself. Every headland you come across has potential for a world-class setup if you meet it with the right swell, the right wind, right conditions. Uh, but yeah, you've just got to go and do your exploring. Basically, what I'd recommend for Chile is just hiring a car and just getting on the open road and exploring. Uh, downsides to Chile is that it is cold, obviously. Uh, in winter, you're going to need a 4.3 in boots, maybe even a hood. In summer, you can get away with a 4.3, maybe even a 3.2. And there's a lot of like cold conditions as well. You know, you're going to be getting changed into a wet wetsuit in windy car parks. You're going to be doing a lot of driving. There is a little bit of localism in some parts of Chile as well, so you've got to watch out for that. But that said, there's some amazing waves there. The scenery is beautiful and it's a really cool place where you can just get on the road and get stuck into adventure. You know, you can camp and you can live outdoors. It's, it's really, really cool. Next up, we've got Norway and Norway is another wicked cold water surf destination. I guess in terms of like a well-established surf destination, this it's only really become like a well-known one in the last few years as wetsuit technology has developed and now allows us to surf in these really cold like Arctic fringes. There's lots of different spots around Norway. Um, a lot of them I don't really know of, and I'm sure a lot of the locals are keeping them quiet. But yeah, Lofoten is, I guess, the main surf town or area in, in the region. I've never been there, but I'd love to go. Looks like you've got some amazing setups. So yeah, you might need to do your, your share of research to tap into some of these waves, but as far as a beautiful cold water destination goes, look no further than Norway but yeah here we're talking seriously cold we're talking like six mil boots hood gloves snow wind blizzard conditions mountains <laughs> yeah crazy conditions next up we've got the South Island of New Zealand so while the north of the country is pretty warm down south things do get cold and in winter you're gonna need a 4-3 boots hood the real deal and conditions get wild down there it's quite far south so it gets battered by the roaring 40s so that south island you get huge swells passing underneath there which means it gets a lot of swell and there's so much coastline to kind of handle it and wrap all of that swell into various coves and beaches and points so Dunedin is the surfing capital of the South Island and it's where you want to base your South Island travels from and around here there's everything from like powerful thumping beach breaks to bright hand points slabs big wave spots so there's so much swell so much potential for waves there I'll let you go off and do your own exploring as to where to find all of these spots but a really cool place to check out. And from there as well, you're really close to other amazing parts of New Zealand. You go up and see the Southern Alps and some amazing lakes and hiking and scenery. It's a really, really cool part of the world. So I just want to interrupt this video to let you know about a really cool brand I've started working with called Ho Stevie. Now Ho Stevie makes some really cool surf products at basically a fraction of the price of what you pay for some of the other top surf brands. I've tried out a few of their products recently and it's been really cool. It's been really cool to work with a brand who, you know, is looking to make good but affordable surf stuff to help people like me and you just go surfing. I've been trying out their five mil wetsuit here at home. I've had some really fun waves here at home. So five mil has been keeping me nice and toasty and I'm about to go traveling for the rest of the year and put all of the other stuff through its paces. So keep an eye out for that. I'll leave a link down in the description where you can check it out. But for now, let's crack on with the video. Next, heading back to Europe, we're going to Ireland. So Ireland has kind of been on the surfing scene for a long time, but in recent years, the fame of Mullagmore and 
you know, those waves under the cliffs. And while not everybody wants to go and surf some of those waves, there's a lot more to Ireland than, like, than death slabs and big wave spots. You've got lots of points, you've got little like easier slabs, you've got beaches, you've got everything for everyone really and there's so much coastline, really friendly locals, it's a really really cool place to check out. Out of most places I've been in the world, that's where I felt most like welcome and accepted as a traveller, which is really a really really hard thing to, to feel in, in most places around the world. But in winter it's seriously cold and it gets some serious swell like in the North Atlantic. But between those storms and when the wind switches and the swell gets a bit smaller, that's when you can score like the best waves in, in the world on the right day. That said, you're going to be competing with howling winds, snow, <laughs> six mil wetsuit, gloves, boots, hood, or the whole, the whole shebang. <laughs> Next, and heading back to the UK, we've got Scotland. So Scotland is, yeah, obviously freezing, freezing cold. So many good waves in Scotland. You've got Thurso East, which is perfect wave on the right day. Ireland, Scotland is so prone to these huge swells and like crazy winds. So they're the kind of conditions that you're battling with in winter. You get a lot of snow, a lot of rain, a lot of wind. But like Ireland, the magic is in between those storms when winds, winds flip offshore, swell gets small enough and you get those little pockets of magic. Um, but like a lot of these like cold destination, you've got like your one sort of main spot and then you'll have to go off and explore other ways from there and a lot of these spots are lesser known so like everywhere I'll, I'll let you go and explore some of these for yourself. Next we head to Canada and while Canada certainly doesn't spring to mind when it comes to top surfing destinations there's fun waves in Canada. There's a hell of a lot of coastline on both the west and east side. The east side you've kind of got Nova Scotia area where there's reefs and cobblestone points. I've never been to Canada but I've met a lot of people from there and they've told me that there are a lot of waves. So the east coast of Canada is a lot colder than the west coast just because the east coast doesn't get the wet weather that comes to the west coast. It's kind of more on par with like the Arctic countries like Russia, Scandinavia. But yeah, you've got Nova Scotia on the east side and then you've got like Vancouver Island on the west coast and probably some other spots as well. I'd say Tofino is probably your best bet for an established surf town to head to and base your surf tripping from. I've never been there, but I'd love to go. They've got a few different beach breaks and points and some secret slabs as well. So yeah, check that out. But again, we're talking five mil boots, hood, gloves, all of that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, while there's waves on Vancouver Island itself off the mainland that are easily accessible, some of the better waves are a lot harder to get to so you'll need to befriend a local and get out on a boat or even a seaplane to tap into its full potential. Next, heading to Australia. So while we don't typically associate Australia with cold weather, down south in the state of Tasmania, things do get really cold. They get snow, they get wind, they get battered by swell. Temperature-wise and swell-wise, it's on par with anywhere else we've talked about in this video. So conditions are serious down there. I've only been there once. I've surfed a couple of times at some random little setups that I won't name, but also walked down to Shipstones Bluff and just watched that from the rocks. Just too scared to surf and it was onshore and there's there's no one in but absolutely amazing so powerful and raw down there it's like you get this like amazing sense of it i can't even imagine what it's like to actually be in the water surfing it must be incredible but all around tasmania there's loads of different like wedges and points and slab and beaches you just you've just got to go and do your exploring. Next we've got Iceland and Iceland is I guess is one of the best cold water destinations on earth. It's an island so it gets swell from all directions so you've got north swell, south swell, west swell, east swell, you've got everything um, and with such a rugged coastline there's lots of coves and points and enough geography to kind of shape all of those swells into lots of different reefs and beaches and slabs and whatever every type of setup. But that said, it's not easy to score waves in, in Iceland. You've got to put your time in. You've got to either get in with the locals who will show you where to surf or put some serious time in out there because when they get their biggest swells, like in, in winter, you don't have much light to deal with. So you've only got a few hours in the day of, of being able to surf. You've got to line up tides, wind, swell. You can do a lot of driving. You've got the craziest weather. I found it really hard to score waves in Iceland. I did surf, but I didn't really score anything that spectacular but I would love to go back there a month or so and just do a bit more research and put a bit more time into scoring waves because there's definitely some amazing potential there. I think the most famous wave is Thorley on the south coast, which 
If you haven't seen my other video already about endangered waves, check that out. That wave's actually under threat at the moment from a seawall construction project. So see the link in the description where you can find out more about that. And last but not least, we've got Alaska. So Alaska has got an absolutely humongous coastline. And to be honest, much of it is not accessible by road. And you've got to put some serious time in to score world-class waves in Alaska because because of how the coast is shaped, you've got all these fingers of headland and crazy mountains and inlets and lakes and estuaries. It's a really hard place to get waves. I mean, you've got to have a boat or a seaplane and somebody who's really in the know and really willing to show you some of the setup because obviously there's some world-class waves in Alaska, but they're just really hard to find and, and even harder to score under the right conditions. But again, unless you're really, really serious about chasing waves, it's going to be hard to, have to score anything other than just a few like novelty novelty surfs just in the most incredible scenery so yeah alaska definitely not for the faint of heart you're talking like six mil only surfable in like autumn summer in winter there's barely any light you're wearing a six mil with gloves hood five mil boots five mil gloves like it's serious stuff in, in alaska so and yeah one day hopefully i'll, I'll go there so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it entertaining and I hope it inspired you to go and check out some of these, I guess, traditionally less appealing parts of the world. I know there's obviously really tight knit surf communities and in all of these different pockets of the world. And each of these spots that I've mentioned today kind of have like their famous spot. So you want to go there and surf that, but then you want to kind of use these places as bases and then go and head off and do your own exploring and head out into the true wilderness. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you found this video inspiring. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did. For now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.